Watch this. I mean, of course, every family would love to have a $2,000 check in yeah. their mailbox, but how are we going to afford this? Well, he says they can afford it in Pennsylvania. The question is, as he alluded to, and I'm going to bet it's why Brian goes, it's unbelievable, is how does he rationalize this doesn't lead to increasing inflation? They are addicted to giving away more of the poison as the cure. You give away free money, you will rise prices once again. It is a common misconception that current inflation is demand driven. We're going to get into that in a second, but first watch them double down without giving any evidence or explaining their economic thinking here. This is the bad guy that stands in the way of my free money. Um, I'm going to print more money. We're going to spend more money. It's going to cause prices to go up. But that's down the line. That's abstract. You won't feel that and tie that directly back to me. All you're going to see is these bad Republicans who stand in the way of me signing a check over to you. In, in essence, then, I guess we can go ahead and take the next logical step and, and diagnose this as what it is, which is a vote buying scheme. People want to see tax dollars and public dollars go directly back to things that benefit them, which is exactly what this policy would be doing. Spending new money into the economy, into things that increase our productive capacity, is widely regarded as a wise investment. Workers having housing, having good food to eat, and having health care increases their productivity and the productive capacity of the economy. Those are good investments. I don't think it's as, uh, you know, to the conversation Steve and I were just having, I don't think it's as difficult to explain to Americans how mm. inflation is caused. Mm. Nope. They are living through it right, right. now. Mm -hmm. And I think they can connect the dots and saying $2,000 equals more inflation. Mm -hmm. We spent too much money. It caused inflation. Now we're going to spend more. It doesn't make sense. Unbelievable. Yes. That's where we start. Right. <laughs> so inflation being demand driven would mean there are too many dollars in the economy Economy, and people are trying to buy up many goods and services. And so companies that sell those goods and services will raise prices to take advantage of that increased demand. Total demand has not surpassed supply. So we know that's not happening here. The metric that economists point to to look at this is the output gap. And it is negative and it has remained negative. Moreover, the total dollar circulating in the economy shrank by $1.8 trillion over this past year. The inflation we're experiencing right now is supply driven. We had gas and oil shortages, supply chain breakdowns during the pandemic, global grain shortages, all of these things impacted prices. And then other companies to take advantage of this increased prices as well because people perceived inflation was widespread. Raising interest rates is an approach that the Federal Reserve takes to address demand-driven inflation. This is why Jerome Powell said that raising rates won't reduce prices for key goods and services. Will gas prices go down as a result of your interest rate increase? I would not think so, no. Well, the Fed's interest rate increases bring food prices down for families. I, I wouldn't say so, no. So if the head of the Federal Reserve knows current inflation is not a demand problem that will be resolved by raising interest rates, why are they doing it? It's a great question. The working theory is, is that by raising interest rates, it becomes more expensive for banks to borrow money, to get money to then loan out to people who want to start businesses and invest in businesses. And when it becomes more expensive to get a loan from the bank, less people will grow businesses and start new ones, which means there are less jobs. When workers are competing for jobs, they're more likely to take jobs for lower wages. So this keeps the amount of money that corporations are spending on workers low and their profit margins high. CEOs are on Wall Street. Uh, they go, they live quarter by quarter. Uh, if they're off by a penny in earnings, Wall Street is not forgiven. So what are the CEOs doing? They're raising prices. I see food prices going up. Promotions are down to zero. Why give away something when you don't have to give it away and you make more margin? The corporations that benefit from wages being low and worker competition being high lobby our elected officials who make fiscal and monetary policy and appoint officials to do so. Moreover, members of Congress themselves have stock investments and see those returns to shareholders when profits are high. Now in Pennsylvania, Governor Wolf is going to subsidize life. Let's not forget that Fox News is owned by Rupert Murdoch, who sits on the board of an energy company and has a ton of money in investments. And Fox News makes billions of dollars off of ad revenue from the very corporations that benefit from this narrative being pushed. 
So this is mainstream media trying to convince their viewers that policies that would be in their interest are somehow, by some economics they won't explain, not.